probably realize, Nude, at this point, we're just a face of the franchise, just a big supporter of SoundCloud rappers. We're just a big fan, as you heard in that last song, of gentlemen just really getting together and making a positive impact on the community, um, really building a team and just uh, doing great things for their community, as you heard in that last song. Um, last week, you know, I went on a whole rant about Project Pat, as dedicated fans may remember, and um, Project Pat was not at all in the song that we went ahead and opened the show with. Instead, it was someone's local cousin that was SoundCloud rapping. Uh, we don't know how the song came about. It is something I've experienced before as well, Nudie, where a song just kind of randomly plays on. And it certainly was not Drake's Knife Talk featuring Project Pat. Um, it certainly was not that. It certainly was not that. However, we are supporting the little guys now, Nude, um, especially with that last song. So I just want to let you know, how do you feel about our latest uh, venture? And to supporting the SoundCloud rappers, it's about time, you know, Face the Franchise kind of stood up for the little people. I'm with it, because here's the deal. Yeah. I did find Knife Talk by Drake. I converted it from YouTube. I did all of that. Yeah. Whatever happened in the process of converting it mm -hmm. changed the song into this SoundCloud shit. And I'm like, all right, that's fine. Cool. Like, when you texted me, you're like, oh, like, I thought we said Knife Talk and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I did do Knife Talk. And then I listened yeah. to it. Yep. And I was like, I swear on my life, Knife Talk was the song I got. And it was the Drake and Project Pat's Knife Talk. Like, I well, I think that anyone that's like a music fanatic in general or just a big fan of music in general will know that sometimes, you know, a SoundCloud rapper, a rapper a little bit down on his luck, might also name his song Knife Talk, released no, a couple of days after Drake's Knife Talk saying. comes out. It was Knife talk. talk. It was Knife Talk. Like, that's what I'm trying to say. Like, right. It was Drake's Knife Talk. I 100% right. knew it. And right. I was like, what the fuck happened? Like, that's literally, like, I'm like, and then when you said it, I was like, okay, great, whatever. Like, in my opinion, like, we're, we're, we're not, we're not, we don't have, like, I guess you could say we don't have patents to use these songs. I don't know if you need a patent to Shoot, use. We have patents, we have patents. Everything's fine. Everything's legally cleared. Listen, if somebody looks, I mean, if, if Drake really needs the $20, uh, we need to make sure that his song gets paid for. We will. I mean, I, I, Drake is a big enough star, <laughs> yeah. but I don't You're think really down on your, your luck, Mr. Drake Graham. We, we'd be happy to help you. <laughs> yeah, I don't think the Degrassi money even got fucking used yet. So I think you're okay there, champ. But in my but you in got my, recommend roll. Like, you got recommend roll. It's fine. It happens. I mean, that's time. what's... That was big time duped, big time bamboozled, big time jaw ruled, fire shit right there, where I just didn't... I thought I knew what was going on. I knew what was going on, but all of a sudden... Uh, this fucker, this this guy who's running Firefest, made it the worst experience of his life. Well, I think someone that could really relate to you this past week is definitely a uh, young linebacker making his way throughout the league. And that, of course, welcome to the face of the franchise. I am Little Joe. Oop. This is my co-host and partner in crime doing it oh so fine, Michael the Pharaoh Shinuti. And someone that can kind of relate to your feeling of, uh, you know, getting Rick and Roll last week is, of course, Cassius Marsh of the right, 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 Bears, right, right. Um, who literally got hip-checked by the refs. Um, and it was a game of, obviously, the Chicago Bears and Justin Fields um, versus the Pittsburgh Steelers, Big Ben the Rapist, and um, the refs going ahead and... Um, facing that week. So I didn't realize the refs could actually join a team for whatever team they could go ahead and decide they want to go for, put a couple grand on it and come out bigger. Good for the refs. They made a little money that night. The refs got their first win of the season. Um, congratulations. To the referees. Yep. All right. So, um, <laughs> he cheats on you, me, so I'll, I, I'll cheat people, on him. Real quick, I'll, you two people, if you could see my partner's just reaction the whole no, time. I mean, I don't know what you I cheat shot I mean, like, you say Ben is a rapist, and then you guys got all these sexual assault stuff and blah, blah, blah. Let's retire Sean Taylor's number three days before anybody Again, knew. And then I've always been open about that. So, um, Ed, get rid of Dan Snyder and, and kill the culture that he cursed. I'm with. over here saying Big Ben's a fat fuck, so we're all on the same page. And so, they should be in jail, I agree. Fat fuck needs to be in jail. Yeah, after he's done playing, he can go to jail. He can do whatever he wants. He, he is nobody to me after that. I mean, as we said many times on this podcast, it's the same deal with uh, Ray Lewis should be in jail too, just because he found Christ and God. If, if, somebody gave me a, if somebody gave me, if somebody gave me a choice between Ben Roethlisberger and let's say thirty days of free wings, thirty days of free wings, I'd trade that in an instant. Ben Roethlisberger is nothing to me. But we're not here to talk about Ben Roethlisberger. <laughs> we're here to talk about my favorite. I think everybody players. would choose that. We're here to talk about my favorite players on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Even vegans would choose that option. 
Exactly. And <laughs> my favorite player is the referees. They played a hell of a game. 122 yards, uh, one first down that pretty much sealed the game. So thank you so much to the refs. Now, everybody's like, Michael, what are you doing? It's a win. Why are you mad? But we won, blah, blah, blah. Let me tell you why I'm fucking pissed and why I went down that Monday night like I lost the fucking, like we lost the game. I was that angry. I was like, this is exactly how I feel when I lose a game. Why? Okay. Pittsburgh Steelers are 17. Those two touchdowns that got called back that shouldn't have been called back because of bullshit calls. For what? The Steelers or the The Bears? Bears. Oh, Both let touchdowns. Me, let me let me finish. Let me listen. I will get to all your things, and if I miss something, you can answer the questions because I will make sure I get everything. Trust me, everything. <laughs> I know you Good. will. Seventeen points up. You're up seventeen zero. Yeah. Okay? You are in their asses. You are killing yep. Justin Fields. You are yep. destroying their offense. The mm-hmm. defense has no answers for some reason. Uh, Najee Harris, Pat Firemuth, who is a bona fide fucking stud. By Ray the way, I've been saying, I've been yeah. saying he's going to be a stud. You, if you listen to this show, I've been saying, put this fucker on the field over that asshole Eric Ebron. Keep him fuck out. And if Ebron he is my official week, starting tight end in every single league right now. He should be picked up. He should be started. The only time you don't start him if you have Travis Kelsey, Waller, Kelsey. You know the fucking names. Still only twenty six percent owned in ESPN leagues, by the way. Exactly. Ten. So let's start with the fucking tree. Let's start with the fucking tree. Please. Fuck a tree away. Have, you have one of the best rated corner uh, slot TVs in the NFL mm-hmm. in, in Trey Norwood. We got him in the draft from Oklahoma. Did well against the Seahawks. You yep. put this fucking asshole mullet on fucking Daryl Mooney. Daryl Mooney is the, one of the fastest wide receivers in the NFL. And no offense, that will, that quarterback that's back there is not, I don't want to say no offense, Nick, Nick Foles would miss Daryl Mooney 100 times. Justin Fields is actually good. Justin yeah. Fields is going to be a star in this league. In that yeah. second half, he feasted on him. He's like, yeah. where can we hit him? We're not going to stop T.J. Watt. We're not going to stop Cam Hayward. We're not going to stop this bona fide defense except for one place, that one slot corner position where I could just attack, attack, and attack. Bang, 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 yeah. bang, 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 bang. Yeah. No, that's the defense. The offense – Everybody's like, Ben didn't lose us the game. Ben didn't do this. Ben didn't do that. Ben didn't lose us the game. You're correct. Absolutely correct. Didn't turn over the ball. Didn't do shit that was stupid. But Ben didn't win us the game. Ben yep. was in between. If we yep. had a better quarterback, that game would have been done. Joey, it'd been 35-0. 35-0. No matter the refs, no matter whatever, and I'll get to them. 35-0. The bootleg. I have never seen somebody slower in my life to get two <laughs> yards. He didn't even get it. He was by himself. Two yards. He was by himself. He couldn't get it. Anyways, Boswell, second best kicker in the NFL behind Tucker. That's without a doubt. Renegade yep. was played at the perfect time. Got a fumble recovery. Now, two the two posi- two things that I hate the most, and I will always always take it as a loss. When Ray Ray McLeod goes for a punt Ray Ray. or a kickoff, there is a eighty percent chance he's fumbling, and I knew it right when he caught the ball. <laughs> I knew he was going to fumble. I was like, he's yeah. going to fumble this shit. He's yeah. going to try to do something stupid, which he did. He tried to spin. Tried if you're to ever in a bad, one of those Williams. dumb bets on like a bar stool or FanDuel app, then next play will fumble. You better hope it's Ray Ray McLeod. I would have said it. I would have taken it. Joey, this guy is a mental midget when it comes to fucking punt returns and shit yeah. like that. I don't understand why we keep trying to use him. He's right. guaranteed to fumble every single game, and it's stupid. And at the worst time, you just destroyed this team. You literally just destroyed their confidence. TJ Watt just had a big ass sack, has three and a half in the game, and mm-hmm. you give the ball back and they score a touchdown. Great. Now my brain is broken. Everything is broken. My mind is broken. Now I was like to see your reaction at that moment. The live my, reaction. My, I was I was a dead man. Now for the biggest I was Sam football, loving it. <laughs> no, Sam was asleep. So I was good. <laughs> I was very like I was screaming, but was I wasn't Frankie letting voice out. You stressed like, it Frankie. I, oh, my God. Frankie was there, too. No, it was by myself. I'm by myself. Okay, by you're myself. not adding stress to Frankie's life. You're not adding stress to I, Sam. I, I'm about to do physical harm to myself because fuck okay. this. And then yeah. second, second. As typical, thing, you'll find yourself on a Sunday or Monday at a Steelers oh, game. Of course. Yeah. So now now let's get to the refs. All right. So it's the goal. Please. It's it's. I think it's like first and goal. They could get a touchdown yep. before the half. They did. Yep. They score. Yep. Then they do a chop block. 
I chop block on on TJ Watt. I'm like, all right, that right there. If we're away, we don't get. Like, I'm like, all right, that's a bad call. Everybody has one bad call. We'll give it to them. Whatever. Cool. They care. But then now to the biggest <laughs> <laughs> shit of them all. Um, the disparity in penalties. Now at I think the third or fourth quarter, they put up the graphic. They're like nine penalties for 120 yards for the Bears, two for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And mm-hmm. I'm like, listen, the Steelers' offensive line sucks. They suck dick. There is no way there has only been two penalties when I know for the fact they're probably holding and they're probably doing all this extra shit to make sure Ben <laughs> doesn't die. Yet Ben was still dying. Najee was still trying yeah, to jump through a brick wall. Yeah. So now we get to the play of the game. Ben has the ball. Ben, all you have to do is be smart with the ball. Don't take a sack. Do not take a sack. Throw the ball fucking away, you dumb motherfucker. He doesn't throw the ball away. Hey, Cash two Super smart. Bowls and one and one uh, alleged rape. So you know what? He, he's got something in him, right? He's smart sometimes, dumb with other times. Don't forget the mic- motorcycle accident. Uh, he, hmm. he gets hit by Cassius Marsh. Cassius Marsh wanted to make the play of the game. He did. Then Tony Corrente, the fucking ref who I've hated the most in my, in my entire NFL career, does the hip check thing, says, I was pulling my flag before he hit me. Da-da-da-da. This, it's egregious. They are doing it back and forth. Whatever. Like I said, the player of the game was the referees. The second player of the game was Watt. The third player of the game was Boz. We didn't deserve to win this game. And I know karma. Karma's going to bite us in the ass. And guess who we play this week? We play the Detroit Lions. We're probably going to lose because we deserve it. No, My dog of the week. Honestly, you already know my dog of the week. Pickup. People are saying, I'm picking the Detroit Lions. I'm picking Last the, week's I mean, dog of the week, Jack Myers, which I did pick. Came through, by the way. Just so yeah. That out I there mean, if you're one and oh, go for it. I, I honestly, I'm not mad if anybody picks the lines. I'm only mad because you're picking the lines despite of me. That's when I'm mad. If you want to pick it despite this stupid ass fucking team that I hate the most, like I love this team so much, the Steelers. I hate them. That's that's what it is. I love. <laughs> I love hey, them. They're like, the team I love the most. Or the team I hate the most. That's no, true. That's true passion, ladies and gentlemen. The best. The best way I can describe <laughs> it is like if your kids were legit dumbasses. And you're like, I fucking hate you. Like, you're making my life a living hell, but I have to love you because I'm, I love you. That's it. Like, my, you're a dumbass. You can talk kid. to my dad. Yeah. yeah. You can talk to my dad too. Like, you're a fucking idiot. Like, you're a <laughs> fucking idiot. But I can't say that because you're my son or daughter or whatever. I'm so mad at this team because I thought this finally was the game where I can just relax for three quarters. First quarter was amazing. Second quarter was okay. Then all of a sudden, this bullshit happened. I'm just now going to every single game thinking it's going to be a close game no matter who we play, no matter what we do, where we at. It's going to be a three-point game that we win, maybe less, and that's it. So that is my rant. That is my full rant on it. I am giving everybody the – I'm saying this right now. The rest won us the game. So I don't want to hear any fucking shit. I got it. Get it. Enough. Whatever credit's due. Credit where credit's due, nude is I being tweeted it. I tweeted it. He tweeted it. He's being fully self-aware and honest with himself, which he always is a Steelers fan. I you know what? I give my partner a lot of shit. I do a lot of dumb bits. But when it comes to being honest about his team, he he absolutely is, and he's always gives himself credit. Well, sometimes I have to give him a call to check in to make sure there's been no poison ingested, to make sure that there's no rope that's getting currently tied up on his oh, ceiling. Oh, I'm going to throw myself off the bridge if we lose to the and, and, and you all think I'm joking about this, but I, have I not legitimately called you in the past three years of us doing this podcast and been like, yo, just a, just a quick yeah, like – you call me at the stupidest times too. You call quick me emotion right check. Something. Like, right when the game is about to end and it's got to be a game-winning field goal or some shit. I remember the Titans game. Oh, yeah, it you was were stressed kick. about that. I was like, dude. I mean, clearly, because Kareem is going to be in my ass if we lose. It was, it was so. week 11 last year. It, or not week 11, because that's when we beat you. Excuse me. That was – it was like week 13, 14. Way, after, I, called, I, lost two, I called. I called you guys beating us. Yeah, I did too. I won. I won some money off that game. But um, anyway – it was like three games later, and I think it was legitimately me and Jeff both called you. Jeff, who sits silent in the corner, who provided today's song, fantastic anthem, um, went ahead and just was like, just a quick emotion check-in, just a quick like a live status. There's we, nothing. I was breathing. 
We are 11 and 0, right? Last year we were 11 and 0. Everybody's like, yeah. Michael, you're being dramatic. You're being dramatic. I said we were frauds, dude. You cannot be a good team with a quarterback that only throws so many yards and a running game that only gets you so many. A running game got us. I think we averaged like 40 yards a game. Like, you win because of the defense. Sure, yeah, great. We win because of our defense. We kept close games. We beat the Titans, the Ravens, the Browns, all within a span of three weeks. Woo-ah! Like, eventually, people are going to figure out your way of running it is going to be throwing it to TikTok fucking juju in a slant, and that's it. And then all you do is cover the top. You're going to have to learn to run the ball, which is why I'm like, this team is not really a fraud team yet. Somebody's like, is this a fraud team? I was like, it's it's not. It's getting there to a, to a point, but it's like Najee's good, um, and our defense brick is still pretty brick, good. They're certainly building themselves to a fraud team, in my personal opinion. No, I mean they're they're one they're one game away from being a fraud team. So if they, here's the deal: if they do not beat the the Lions by ten points or more, they're frauds. And I I bet the house on the on the Lions because they could win. Bet the house on the Chargers the week after and the Bengals the week after that. I'm serious. If they do not beat the Lions by 10 points, we're going to, I mean, we beat They're the Lions. They're saying fade Pittsburgh Steelers. If you don't beat the Lions by 10 points, we're fade. We get, you got to fade the Steelers. No, fade them anyway. I mean, the really the best <laughs> bet, the best bet, do you know what the best bet you could do right now and it's guaranteed is the over unders and Steelers games. I don't think they've ever hit an over. I think they've only hit the over once. And I think it was the game of, when was the game? I think it was the, the Raiders game. I think that was the last game, but I remember it's really? like, it's, it, it's obnoxiously bad. It's like obnoxiously to me because I'm like, we have so the Raiders weapons. and the bears week are the only two weeks where they actually hit the over. I think so. Okay. Okay. I mean, all I have to say about this game, dude, is simply we got to check every single ref that ref that game and check their phones and go inside their FanDuel, Barstool, DraftKings, you name it, apps, and check their bet slips because I promise you it was Steelers all the way. Um, Thank God, um, in terms of my team this past week, we didn't play. It was fantastic. It was a beautiful week. We all did so well. Um, no articles dropped. It was it was just really a great week all around. Uh, moving right along, uh, we are doing a Friday show. This is being released on a Friday. We had a game last night new that I'm also going to let you do another rant and rambling on. Since you uh, were pristine on that last segment, I'm going to let the the uh, my secondary, my in-training king of rambling here um, – Go ahead and go off on last night's game. You, We both had the Ravens to cover. We texted ourselves uh, our picks before the game started. We both had the Ravens cover. Obviously, that was dead wrong. Um, you had the over. I had the under. So there was only not a whole lot of wiggle room and positivity. I was getting things correct there, except for Joe with the under. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and let you kind of take your perspective on Whoa. literally top five most boring game of the season so far. Yeah, I'm going to do this. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pick the Ravens from now on to cover. I don't care if I lose our bet. I don't care if we do anything. If I pick the Ravens to cover every time and they lose, <laughs> yeah, sure, fuck it. I will eat some flatliners for that shit. I don't give a fuck. So you Listen. have, just real quick, quick side note, you have two traditions now, Brew. You now have, every time you pick the Ravens to cover, they don't cover. So you got to go with that. That that has to be, you got to stick with that because clearly the Ravens are failing when you go for them and you love that as a Steelers fan. And then when you don't pick the Steelers game on this show. Zero. They, I'm not picking them ever. They're again. undefeated since you have not picked the Steelers. Since yeah, you have not picked the Steelers, they're undefeated. Yeah. So you're welcome, everyone. But they don't cover. <laughs> so so clearly we have methods that stand out and work and are making an impact. Go ahead. Michael the Ferris Go ahead. Give us what you got on this game. Well, if you want to call the Steelers frauds, you have to call the Ravens frauds. The Ravens are the yep. biggest fraudulent team <laughs> in the NFL. No, listen, stop. No, no, no. Nah, stop. Everybody has a bad game. Stop, 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 stop. Joey. And I know what argument stop. you're about to make. You know what argument I'm about to make. They have four wins that if they play those games again, they lose. 66 yard field goal. Is Tucker going to do that again? Probably not. Probably I mean, not. You- He's Justin Tucker, so he he easily could. Sixty-six and he banked you know, it they in. They say he knocks it back seventy-yarders like in warm-ups in clear. practice all the time. No, okay, yeah, when nobody's running after them and there's no pressure, I can hit. You can throw a, you can shoot a basketball like that. Who gives a shit? Like I've seen you, ma- I've seen you make ten free throws in a row because you're not in a pressured situation. That's different. You're in That's a pressured no, situation. That's the of the people. No one has ever seen me make ten free throws in a row because that's just not possible with my basketball capability. Sixty-six yarder. One, two, 
DH is the worst running back I've ever seen in my entire life. And if Andy Reid had any brains, he would have never put the ball in his hand. And he fumbled it. That's number two. <laughs> and they just went brain dead. Like, you were in Lamar Jackson's ass, and you stopped. That's two. Three, blanking asshole shit. He couldn't hit a fucking – he couldn't hit water if he fell out of a fucking boat because he's a bitch-ass motherfucker trying to Jesus go out there with a fucking Christ. groin. He probably what? has a family, brother. I don't give a fuck what he has. <laughs> motherfucker needs to stop being – people need to – listen to me. If you're a football player and you're injured and you're trying to be kind of called a hero, you're not helping anybody. You're being an asshole. You're being a dickhead, and you're not helping shit. So you missed three field goals that could have won you the team, could have could have won you the game, could have helped me out. You know what? Help me out. That's three lo- <laughs> losses right there. Number four. Number four. Yeah. How is the really how's see. the gambling this year going for you? By the way. It's all right. It's actually not doing. It's not doing. It's all right. It's like in the middle. I would say like in between. But back to the real. He's point. lost some money, folks. <laughs> Vikings, you suck. You are really like the team that really likes to be close and like lose everything. So I'm not even going to put that loss on the Ravens or the, that's more Vikings. You suck dick. Vikings. You really suck dick. Yeah. Now, last night, Kurt, you can't fucking, I don't know how you ever got married with all due respect to your manhood, but I just, I can't see you closing a fucking door to be honest with you. Zero. zero. And like the, the wherewithal of the Vikings is zero. I can't wait when we play them because again, it will be a close game because that's what we do. And we, at least we know that they can't close. So we'll have a chance to win that. But, Back to last night. Last night was probably... You're using your high-pitched Joe voice there, by the way. That's not way now. I like it. I'm I'm angry at the Steelers. I'm pissed already. I This game is not even... Start, it's not even Sunday, and I'm already pissed about the game. Like, I'm pissed. Like, I'm angry already. I already know what's going to fucking happen. We're going to get up by 20, <laughs> and then somehow we're going to make it a close game, and we have to have a Boswell field goal to win it. But I digress. Um, last yeah, night, Ravens oh, Dolphins. <laughs> last, last night... Everybody picked the Ravens to win. Everybody said it's a runaway. Lamar's yeah. home. All these players are home. Blah, blah, blah. First drive looked pretty good for the Ravens. They really are. They, they're moving up and down the field. Devontae Freeman looked like Devontae Freeman from the Falcons. Like, he was going in. Like, he was doing shit. They, they stopped him. Great for the Dolphins. They stopped him for a field goal. Great. Now here's where the tides turn. The next drive that the Ravens had. That kicker who made a 66-yard field goal not too long ago mm-hmm. missed a 48. Mm-hmm. 48, mm-hmm. that's chip shot for T- Justin Tucker. Yeah. If you don't tell me that doesn't ruin a team's morale just a little bit, you're mm-hmm. bullshitting. Because an automatic kicker missing is, like, devastating. Content. He's missed things like that before. Every kicker's going to miss uh, every once true. in a while. Is Steph but, Curry going to hit the corner three every time? No. no. I'm, but, like, listen to the, Like, listen. Like, you, uh, you're, you like, you're like, damn, like, Justin, like, you should hit that. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like Steph misses a shot. Damn Steph, you should hit that. Like yeah. it's, it's different. It's like different for football because it's like, you're not going to get 20 shots at it. Like Steph has 20 shots at it. Of course, he's not going to hit every single one. That's astronomically impossible to hit 20 shots in a row. And from where he shoots it at least. So that's one. Two, credit to the defense of the fucking Dolphins to say, we're going to stop your run now. We're going to put our all-pro corners, Byron Jones and Xavier Howard, on Bateman and Brown, who are not good. Let's be – you guys want to crown their asses? Please. But, I don't get it. But Bateman, all of a sudden, the last two weeks is the best receiver in football? the best receiver in football. Best, <laughs> best rookie wide receiver. Forgot, Jamar Chase is dead. And him and, him and Elijah dead. Moore are best, best receivers Devontae in football. Smith is dead. <laughs> you are sacking this man's ass. And you know who's getting fucked up on Veterans Day? Thank you for your service, you piece of shit. Villa, fuck you, Nueva. You had all the time. You suck dick. I saw them coming <laughs> after your ass like I did all last year, and they were sacking the uh. Mars bitch ass all day long. Now, guess what's happening now? Thank you, Dolphins. You gave everyone the blueprint of how to fuck this team. You take away Mark Andrews, you take away the running game, Vince. and you and you you go after them. You do not let Lamar sit dolphin. there, try to throw. You go after his ass, make him hurry up, make him frustrated because he was on the sidelines bitching like everybody says. Oh, Lamar's a nice guy. Lamar doesn't go after his teammate. He is yelling at Bateman. He is yelling at Brown. He wants to win. I'm not saying he's a diva for doing it. 
I'm just happy mm. when I see frustration in that man's eyes. I'm Fuck just it. implying it. Listen, He's listen. I think there's shit. a little bias with your take. No, no, no. I think no, no, no. Hold time out, time out. Moralizing. Time out. I need my third point. Let me get my third point. Okay, and go, ahead, I, go ahead. And you got it. Third point. Credit to the, also the Dolphins for after that Mark Andrews touchdown that could have made the, uh, like, oh, here we go. The Ravens are going to win because they're, they're going to do some Lamar shit and blah, blah, blah. Tua stood in the pocket. Yes, I said Tua Tungavailoa was in the game because Jacoby got absolutely destroyed. He has a torn ACL. His brother's about to get benched in Maryland, by the way. Good. He sucks. Uh, he Tua, sucks. Uh, Ravens suck at the most sad in defense. They can't stop the big play to save their life. They couldn't, like, literally. Like, they are the worst team against the big play time and time again. No, Joey, statistically, <laughs> go online, check. I Check. I'm serious, and this is not just a biased take. They are the worst. They are the absolute worst. Wheel route. A wheel route? That's how you beat them? A wheel route? You guys suck. It's fair. It's fair. Listen, no, another, that's it. it's totally that's it. fair. Ravens are frauds. Ravens are not good. The best team in the AFC is the Titans, and that's it. We're done with this conversation. It's Titans and everybody else. Everybody smack together. Winner of the Super Bowl is in the NFC. Done. Well, with, with the Titans, my, my conversation of it's Mike Vrabel's team and, and Brian Tannehill is just the uh, uh, average quarterback plug and play living in it because it, it is a clearly defensive mind in that uh, thing. But I, I'll get to that no. later. I'll get to that when you cover it. your uh, disappointment. Oh, I, but, I'm going to fuck you up. But let's let's clear out a little good good luck, but I'd love to see you try that. I'm extra thick these days. They order me extra thick, and I don't think you can break through that wall. I'm not actually but, saying I'm going to fuck you up like – that's we're not in tenth grade. Yes, I'm gonna. Talk hey, listen. To you about if it. you want me to actually come, take a shit in your apartment. Go ahead. Literally become you. Take over your You're life. You're over here picking Lamar Jackson, and he looked. Have awful. have Frankie raised as a you know be oh, raised by a good father. You know have Sammy have someone that's you know there and actually listening and present in her life. She could probably use. But with we all have the mental breakdowns in our in our in our house. That you caused her mental breakdowns. I'm not surprised to hear that. I would definitely alleviate yeah, her all that. Mental breakdown, all she wants. I'm just trying to. Ha- I'm trying to watch the game, enjoy it, and that's it. <laughs> I, I like that you're honest. That you do cause your girlfriend mental breakdowns. But with all that being oh, said, oh, oh, before we get, to, I'm over here looking at Steelers minus nine. Bet, bet the Lions. Congratulations, Lions are going to cover it by four. Go ahead. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to to calm down my partner here a little bit. I'm gonna try to get him back and centered, but I don't know if this following take will do that. I'd like to at least give a little clarity to the game, a little uh, yeah, remove some of the bias that was just sprinkled all over that take. While I do agree with some of it, I do agree the big play is why the Ravens have been down so much and why they've skate, skated out of a lot of games. I also think it's a little silly to go ahead and then say that the Ravens' defense, because of that, is is fraud and the team as a whole is a fraud. I think it's a little silly to say that Justin Tucker nope. Nope. missing a fraud. field goal kick fraud. is demoralizing for the rest of the fraud. team. It is. It's, it's not. It's a chit like you said, everybody is going to miss those type of shots. Steph Curry's gonna take Clay Steph Curry and Clay Thompson are gonna take bad shots. Justin Tuck is gonna take 20, a bad shot. You can't have maybe three tries a game at field goal. Three times. He's gonna, he's gonna miss stuff like that. He's Bro. gonna miss like I think I'm not that, saying he can't miss. I'm saying you're that, missing that's the point. What you're saying. My that's point exactly is, what you're saying. I'm saying this is what I'm trying to say to you. Okay. He can miss that. It's still demoralizing. It's still, at least, I'm not saying it ruins the game. I'm not saying, oh, the Ravens are now going to lose the game because Justin Tucker missed. I'm saying, if I'm a player, I'm like, damn, Tuck, like, you usually hit those. Like, that's what I'm trying to say is, like, and if oh, I'm talking, that, that's one bad one. That's one bad one, Lamar. My fault. Like, I'll get you next time. Yeah, like, don't I mean, I'm sure it. everybody is like, yeah, that's fine, blah, blah, blah. But in your head, you're like, damn, that kind of sucks. Like, we should have had three points. That's it. I would have said the same with Boswell because I think Boswell's the second best kicker. But again, right. there you go. And you've seen him miss bad kicks like that too. I mean, you're reaching for the stars and falling exactly. flat on the dirt, in my opinion. With no, I'm not. I'm just being. You're miss. You're saying. I'm saying. You think I'm putting it on Justin Tucker because of the one kick? I'm saying. No, I don't. Then what are you trying to say? It should, I think that you're say, putting it on the defense and Justin Tucker. And I think you're also. No, this I'm is also your 100 percent on the defense. Are you kidding me? The defense was ass last night. It was absolute ass. And they've been ass. I would say, I mean, you keep a team under 20 points in the NFL, that's still pretty good. 
you, I mean, it was, they mean? had 22 when the game was all said and done. Well, but for I the mean, majority of that the game, they were under 20 points. Well, yes, there was a couple big plays that were okay, stupid that should have been let up. Because somebody has to take the blame from last night. It's either Harbaugh, Lamar, or the defense. And I actually was being nice. I was putting it on the defense. Because Lamar I, had I, no chance. Lamar had no chance. They were in his ass every single play. There was no 100%. run game. And you put that a lot on the line. I mean, Lamar did what he could and what he's been doing all season, and that's scra- scraping wins together. And you got to give him credit for what he's done this season. It's been impressive. He's clearly, I mean, all the rare time I put a bit aside, I clearly am back in his wheelhouse. I mean, it, because he's just impressed the hell out of me, and, and you too. I know he has um, with some of the things that he's been able to do. I think you you put a little bit on the you put a little bit on everybody. This is just a bad game for the Ravens team as a whole. They didn't look like themselves. It's a short week. Yeah. Yes, I know I sound like now I'm Ravens biased and I'm making excuses for them. And I don't at all minimize the, what the, the Dolphins did. The defense looked fantastic. Uh, Tua made the plays necessary to get done what he needed to get done. And the and again, the Dolphins defense uh, that I want to make sure I mentioned looked like the Dolphins defense of last year, which I think was a severely underrated defense that gave them a lot of wins, that got a lot of hype behind it eventually to get them in the playoffs uh, for the time they did. Um, or they just barely missed the playoffs. But they had a shot there for a while. So I mean, with all that being said, I think it's a bad game. For, for the Ravens, I'm not ready to call them fraudulent. I'm not even ready necessarily to call the Steelers fraudulent yet. I think the ASC North as a whole, I find a lot easier calling like fraudulent right black, now. Black and blue division. That's all we do. We beat up on each other. We play close games. We don't know how to win them. But somehow, some way, one of our teams goes all the way to either the divisional round or the AFC championship game because we just know how to fucking play tough games. And that's what we do. And that's our division as a whole. It's been like that since the the beginning of time, since it got realigned after the Oilers became the Texans. Like, when the Steelers won the Super Bowl in 2008, or where, uh, sorry, 2005, when we were the sixth seed, oh, they picked us. But because we played in the division and we played a, a fucking hard-ass team in the Bengals, we knew how to beat the Colts, the Broncos, and then eventually the Seahawks. So it's like, in my brain, in my mind, it's wide open. Oh, I mean, it's, yep. it, nobody I agree says, with you on that. Everybody wanted to crown the Ravens. Everybody wanted to crown the Bengals. I crowned the Bengals. I said yeah. the Bengals. We both did on this the, show. But the Bengals got demolished by the Browns, who were under everybody. Now they're in third. And the, and Jets. the Jets. Yeah. You have us, who was dead in the water at one and three. We down to just round off four straight. Thank you, refs, again. And we're in. And apparently you for not picking them uh, every week on Face of the Franchise. I'm the best fan in the world. I'm the best Steelers fan in the world. Shout out D Mike. He's actually one. And then, um, <laughs> and then, and then, wow, that's close. wow. Really? You're giving him one? D Mike is okay. Here's why I give D Mike one I let my emotions get ahead of me. He actually could tell you if the Steelers are good or bad. I will always say they're bad. Always. <laughs> then, like, we could win 30 to 10, and I'll still find a way to say there's, there's something wrong. Um, he is the calm then, eye in every storm. Exactly. So what was I going to say? So we're back and then we win. Hopefully we beat the Lions. I'm not saying we are. If we beat the Lions, we're in first place again. Ravens are down in second. Like it's going to switch like this all the time. And we still have one game against the Bengals and the Browns and two against the Ravens. And I'm sure everybody else has the same thing. So it's like the AFC North in a whole, it's like, it's kind of like a puzzle. It's, it's, it is what it is. A 10 win team will win this. It division. is literally a 10,000 piece puzzle and you've had six drinks. Yeah, and if it wasn't for the Chiefs and if it wasn't for the Pats, who I believe are the other wildcard teams as we're speaking right now, yeah. I would say three teams would make the division. And who knows? Maybe three teams will. But I still think it's two te- at this moment, it's two teams. And whatever those two teams are, we'll see. But I can see three teams still making the wild One team win the division, two win the wild card, And this is the best division in football because of the black and blue stuff. AFC West close second, but I just think our defense, the caliber of quarterbacks in Burrow, Lamar, and Baker put us up there. And just talent wise, I feel like talent wise, we just have a lot in the AFC North. And yes, the Ravens took a bad loss yesterday. Bengals took a bad loss to the fucking Jets. Browns took a bad loss to probably a lot of teams. I can't remember. And then us, we were one and three. So we are all getting back to where we are. I'm saying the Ravens are frauds because can't always be down and try to win the game. 
That's it. That's all I'm saying. You can't rely on Lamar all the time. That's too much pressure on Lamar. He did great. He has done great. And I will admit he's done great. But you need to win the game more than just the fourth quarter. That's all I'm trying to say. I mean, 100%. I, I think as a whole, this this whole season, and we'll get to more of that here in a second, Be uh, we got to cover somebody else first, but I think the season as a whole, as we'll talk about, has literally been a 10,000 puzzle piece after you've had six drinks because nothing after week nine makes sense. Um, I think next week we will probably get our tradition, even though it's a little bit late and ha- over halfway through the season, I think next week, Nude, we'll probably get into our kind of halfway uh, awards, awards and what we yeah. think so far and where we're at and, and who's our MVP so far and all that good stuff. Up. maybe week 10 will give us a little bit clearer picture of that um something we are sure of and we're sure that they are a fraud uh, as we said many times on this show it's your favorite bar conversation to say that odell beckham jr is literally only famous because of that one arm catch that one time and it's the best marketing out of any athlete ever um odell beckham looks is it finalized yet do we have, have we signed the crowd of dies and cross the t's and all that good yeah, stuff so, make him a ram so, so what happened was it was down to two teams uh, the Packers and the Rams. Packers gave him the league minimum, basically saying yeah, to Aaron Rodgers, Aaron, <laughs> this is this is funny because um, Adam said in his press conference, he's like, usually we don't do shit like this, but I feel like we are. Then it comes out that they only gave him the league minimum, basically saying, you either come with us or not, who gives a shit. Basically telling Aaron <laughs> Rodgers and Adams, we have accepted our fate. You two can leave, whatever, because we don't care. Now, that's for the yeah. Packers. Rams did everything in their power to get him. Everything. So the story came out. He was FaceTiming Jalen Ramsey saying, yo, Jalen, like, I would love to come to the Rams. Would I fit with the group? Blah, blah, blah. Takes his phone, goes to the wide receiver room where Cup and Woods are ecstatic. All of them were like, Cub, we need you. We can win this. We're all in. Blah, blah, blah. This, this, and this. Signs a 4.2, 4. 2 $5 million deal. I think it goes up to 10 if there's certain things that happens. So I'm looking at that. And I think it's incentive wise. So now they talk. Now you have Von Miller. Now you have Odell Beckham on the Rams. The Rams are the Super Bowl favorite. This is the first time I will say in history since the New England Patriots with uh, Randy Moss, Wes Welker, Junior Seau, where they were almost undefeated, lost to the Giants. Worth up to $4.25 million. You're right. Yeah. So this is the first time since that team where I'm like, this team wins a Super Bowl. They did what they had to do. They did it. That's a bust year. Sorry. You went all in. You went all in. Matthew Stafford. You went to get Von Miller. You went to yeah. get fucking uh, Odell Beckham. You even yeah. told Deshaun Jackson to get the kick rocks because you're like, hey, if you don't want like it and you don't want to ring, go find Jalen Ramsey. Ramsey. They, they win. Got, you know, yeah. yeah. They have no picks. Let's just let's call it. Sp- they don't have picks. They literally they do what win. you do on a franchise on Madden. You know what I mean? Exactly. Where you're, yes. And I told somebody this. I was like, this is the baseball baseball way of thinking. This is what yeah. the Yankees do. This is what the yeah. Red Sox do. This is what the Astros did. You go Not all Billy Bean way two, of thinking, but yeah. Yeah, you go all in for two to three years. You try to win two Super Bowls. One is the minimum. You, if you win two, that's amazing. But that's it. Now, here's the deal. Sean McVay doesn't win the Super Bowl this year. You have to really think about firing him because this is the time where you have to win the Super Bowl or you're a bitch and you have to find a coach that will lead this team to win the Super Bowl. And I understand it's not like baseball and I understand it's not like basketball where it's six, five, best out of five, best out of seven. I don't care. You have every fucking piece that you could ever ask for on that goddamn team. You need to win the Super Bowl or that's it. Now, here's another side comment. And in my opinion, real quick too, with, with the weapons he had at the time when he got them in the Super Bowl with that seven and three game and the team he had then, if you can get that team to the Super Bowl, you have no you excuse not team. to only get to this team to the Super Bowl, but win the Super yes. Bowl. Jay, you got Jared Goff to a Super Bowl. So you better believe you can get the the now uh, 2000, uh, 2011 New York Yankees. Uh, football version in the Los Angeles Rams, you better get to them in the Super Bowl. Or the 1956 exactly. Yankees or the 1954 Yankees. Pick your year. Exactly. And that's what I'm trying to say. And now, uh, I don't know if you know this, but there's a lawsuit uh, in the NFL with uh, Kroenke and St. Louis because of the move and everything. I think it's going to be settled, but people think this is the reason why um, you're going all in. 
to win a Super Bowl because they think there might be, uh, I guess, some splashback. Uh, shout out to mm. my boy Azar. He's the one who told me about it. He uh, he is like appreciate yeah, the inside I mean, info, Azar. I did not know about this either. Yeah, so there's it's an allegation that is happening, but just to keep in mind of why they're doing all this. So Rams now Super Bowl favorite. If they weren't, they're plus eight hundred still to win the Super Bowl. I put ten dollars on it to win ninety. Uh, or sorry, not plus nine hundred. Put ten to win ninety. That's where we're or, at right now. Or win a hundred so. technically because you get your ten back. However you want to look at it, I got you. Exactly. Exactly. So yeah, that's where that, we are. good luck You have no excuse. Um, and speaking of no excuses, but they still found out a way to come up excuses. Week nine itself, nude was just a a little cluster clusterfuck of what the fuck i cannot make any sense again i love our reference of the ten thousand puzzle piece and you know six six drinks deep nothing makes sense um urban meyer defeated the the buffalo bills um i i am just in utter shock and that that's where i'll go ahead and just start right in uh for our week nine reviews disappointment surprises and games of the week to start with joe's disappointment nude this week um if you don't mind as is you know i i what team is going to show us consistency what team not in the is, afc not in the afc not dude. in the afc i mean yes a lot of people still can point to the titans in the last couple of weeks but let's look at their first couple of weeks i there is no team that has a body of work and yes you know i can go ahead and i can overlook one off game i can overlook a weird week or whatever the case may be but Week nine was kind of the antithesis of what the whole year so far has been in the NFL. We don't have any discernible identity of any team, in my opinion, so far right now. We don't know what any team is. I mean, you can make maybe arguments for the Cardinals and yeah, then Aaron Rodgers actors, but that's gonna, about it. I was going to name a couple, but you go ahead. I mean, you could say Rams as well at this point, despite what happened last week. But I mean, it's it's let's focus on this Bills Jags game first and foremost. I don't know if teams have just figured out Josh Allen and and the Diggs regime. If they McDermott is his game plan, what he's done has just been on film enough, and now it's not happening anymore. But they need a running game desperately, nude. I, I think that was a huge component of why the game was it the way it was. <laughs> <laughs> This is not college, and even college, you should not throw 47 passing attempts. Yep. Yep. And not only that, you have 31 completions that are for 264 yards total. 264 yards total. If you do that math, that means you are basically averaging four and a half yards per pass. That is fucking terrible, dude. Um, I, 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 this offense the last three weeks has just looked completely lost the defense is still the defense in my in my personal opinion the defense is still mm -hmm. fine they're still doing what they've always done the bills mm -hmm. defense still looks pretty scary i mean you can go ahead well yes i understand mm -hmm. that one weird week with the titans uh last week but besides that they are two weeks ago besides that they they that defense has looked utterly dominant and this offense where you want it to look better noon has continually just got worse no and that's what i was saying so I hate to bring it back to the Steelers, but last year they went 11 and 0 with our run game. Well, when won't and you? That, but I'm being honest; like everybody saw the fraudulent thing when they didn't have a run game. And I'm not trying to say here the Bills are fraudulent, but let's look at their wins. Their biggest win yeah. is against Kansas City, and that's it. After that, it's Miami, Houston, Washington Football Team, and I think that's they're not. <laughs> it's and it's not like they're beating world beaters because they lost to the Steelers, they lost to the Titans, they've now lost to the Jags. And they still have to play the Patriots. And I think the Patriots right now could beat them twice. And that's funny to say, but the defense is playing lights out. The running game is there. Uh, Ma uh, Mac Jones is looking like the rookie of the year with Jamar Chase and Najee Harris. So you could pick between those three. But yeah. I'm just being honest. Like, the Bills might be in some trouble. The Bills might be in some trouble. We'll see this week. They do play the Jets, so if they demolish the Jets, which they should, because... And if they do, it's still not a true test. I mean, you can say what you will about the Jets. We've had a couple of good games. That's still, for me, we we need a couple more weeks of body of work before we make our final judgment Absolutely. on the Bills. Absolutely. But we are fully free to du judge if they, once again, are in the same situation they had with the Jaguars. Then I think we know who the Bills are at this point. Exactly. So I agree with you, and I will take the Bills' take as it is, because I am going with my team who I think is the most consistent team in the NFL, and that is the Cardinals 
The Cardinals. The Cardinals. The Cardinals. Arizona fucking Cardinals. Now, I agree. That's they why I mentioned them. did not have who I think is one Wait, of the Wait, your Cardinals. disappointment is Rams and Titans, by the way. Are we doing We're disappointments? Doing oh, yeah. sorry. Never mind. So, Sorry, right, baby. Sorry. Right. That's why we keep each other on our toes. We make each other better. Keep it right. Uh, no, same thing. Same thing. The most yeah. consistent team in the AFC Titans. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Now we're going to go to a team where they're they. We just talked about the Rams going all in. We just talked about it. They didn't have Von Miller that night on Sunday night. Still, so everybody picked the Rams to destroy the Titans without Derrick Henry. Without him. Why is this a disappointment for the Rams? Because the Rams should kill a team like this. You don't have, they don't have a running game. You know what they're going to do. They're going to try to pass it. They have the ghost of Adrian Peterson back in the backfield. Defense, yeah. the defense is good, but you should be able to carve them up with Cooper Cup, Robert Woods. Uh, you got to give AD real quick some credit for still like just getting out there. He still looks like he's in great shape. Yeah, I get the age, but shout out AD. But that beautiful chocolate man. Uh, so he just, <laughs> but. Credit to the defense of the Titans, man. Titans took two pick sixes. They shut them down. The front seven was in Matthew Stafford's grill. Made my MVP pick look like an idiot. And that they defensive kept, mind, they Kareem. Going. That defensive rabel mind. Oh, my God. And the play calling on offense. They knew what they had. They put a three-back set. They put Mick Nichols. They put Adrian Peterson. Dante Foreman came in looking like one of the better running backs that, it, that they had. The offensive line kept Matthew or uh, Matthew Stafford kept Ryan Tannehill upright. He was trying to find AJ Brown. He found these different tight ends. Another good tight plug end. and play performance by him, by the way. Just so oh you know the stats God. here. I want to remind everybody every week. A, Nineteen for twenty-seven and only one hundred and forty-three passes. He is a top twelve quarterback. Ryan Tannehill is a top twelve quarterback. I don't care what you think. He I works. What you he said. works. Vrabel's offense no, really well. One of the best. Not, it's not even Vrabel. He best minds in football. What are you going to say? Because he has Derrick Henry. He just beat one of the better teams without Derrick Henry. Rams. Yeah, I'm the, sorry. The defense you were and Vrabel's great play calling, taking use of his other running backs. Oh I mean, the running gosh. backs had a better no, game. He than, was not. A, oh no. Ryan. Ryan Tannehill had a fucking. Well, how many completions he had? How many touchdowns he had? Ryan Tannehill put this team. He had on one his touchdown back. And interception. So what? They didn't kill him. Matthew Stafford had two for a pick six. That's what a plug-and-play guy. He manages the game yeah. and keeps it winnable. Rams should have beat this team by 40. Didn't happen. <laughs> That's it. Kevin, Kevin, we talk about our safeties. Kevin Bayard is the best safety right now in football. Sorry, Mika. You're third or fourth, probably. You're my man. He's not the – Bayard is not overall better than Fitzpatrick. I'm just saying this year. It's okay. Okay. I'm, I'm okay. Man. okay. I'm man enough to admit it. You fully uh, got off the rails at this point. Uh, all right. All right. Uh, for Fitzpat- Come on. That's my. There's a couple people I have to defend on the Steelers. You know, Fitzpatrick's one of them. We're, we're so, back on the train tracks. We're back on the train tracks. Rams. Sorry. That was disappointment. You are now all in. So we'll see what happens. I'm yeah. I'm calling your season done. That's it. I, I agree. I mean, again, yeah, we did mention Von. You did mention Von Miller just now, but we didn't mention when we were uh, saying another guy that they acquired a uh, part of their Yankee team, um, part of their Golden State Warriors of uh, 2017, what have you. Um, again, for me, the Rams are still like the Titans, like the Cardinals, and like the Packers with Aaron Rodgers. Um, are still the most consistent teams with an identity in the league. This is again, they've had two games this year where they looked. A little bit rocked. Um, I'm not concerned about this team going forward. I think they did play a great Tennessee Titans team with a uh, decent plug-and-play quarterback and an incredible uh, defense. But I, I think, again, I'm not concerned about the Rams going forward. This is definitely one you should have won. Um, I don't think 40 is a little ridiculous because, again, the Titans are a pretty good team and a pretty good defense. No, there uh, are. I'm just I'm, – I'm more so like, are you kidding me? Like, you left the team that you're supposed to beat convincingly convincingly and they didn't and they did it that's all i'm trying to say um yeah no i i certainly agree i mean I, again it was uh it, i'm not concerned with them overall though it's it's just a blunder it's definitely a disappointment for the rams um but something that i was pleasantly surprised with this week new that i would have to say um you know I, I i never like to be too graphic on this show but um that i was just fully raged on hard for a solid four hours from four to four to eight on Sunday, and that was watching the Broncos absolutely expose and embarrass the Go Dallas off, Kings. Go off, Kings. 
absolutely expose and embarrass the Dallas Cowboys for what they are and who they are. Listen, this is what the Cowboys have always done. Okay, they have this firepower offense that looks fantastic. And now people were sold on them because you have a player named Trayvon Diggs, who absolutely had some of the best defensive games I've ever seen out of any player in their whole entire career. But that's all they have on defense. I don't care what you say, because that defense was fucking exposed. Not only that, but the cold glaring holes that I've been trying to point out all season in the Dallas Cowboys was you shown and, uh, this past you, week. You, you I, I, I don't Stephen, think that that's the quarterback that's going to go ahead and cross the line. I think he is a flashier Tony Romo. He's the guy that's going to go ahead and make you look great in the regular season and never close a playoff game whatsoever. I, I think Zeke is a player that we've also overestimated incredibly. At this point, Zeke, the fact that you are not in an MVP conversation, that you are not at a Derrick Henry level, means you are another disappointment in yourself, and I'm tired of going ahead and praising this guy as a top five running back in the league. He is simply not. I I am just satisfied in terms of this team showing exactly what they are. Now, there's a lot of people that are going to use the argument that I'm using for, you know, the Cardinals, the Titans, and the Packers, and the Rams, and that they have shown consistency, and this was a one-off game. They've shown flashes of this all season, guys. Whether you want to see it or not, these games have been close. They haven't really blown out anybody, and it's very reminiscent of last year of yep. when the defense goes ahead, lets yep. the offense, opposing offense, score 30 points, and Dak has to figure out how to get 35 or 40. And and that's what this, this is what the team is. This is exactly what this team is. That's what a Mike McCarthy team has always been. There's a reason he got kicked the fuck out of Green Bay, and I've been saying that since he got hired um, to be King Average once again, along with Jeff Fisher. I mean, he's in that same category for me, a football coach. Cowboys, once again, you guys are great at selling yourselves. You're great at convincing yourselves you're the best team in the land. And you were exposed once again for being selling a little bit and biting off a little bit more than you can chew. You are what you are, and the Denver Broncos showed that. Without uh-huh. Devon Miller. I don't have to add anything more. That's a great take. Mike McCarthy is one of the worst coaches of all time. That is the, mm-hmm. o- the only thing I wanted to say. So. How yeah. expected Jake Doran to run down during this take? Yeah. What? Jake Doran being a Cowboys fan, half expected him. He's oh, he's staying uh, here at the Doran's residence as he's preparing for an LSAT. Shout out Jake. Good for you. Progressing your career, progressing your life. Proud of you, buddy. But it half expected him to go ahead. I don't even know if he listens to the show, but it half expected him to come down here and tear my head off. But anyway. <laughs> So, now to my surprise of the week, uh, yeah. the Arizona Cardinals. Now, I was saying it in the previous segment. Uh, this might be the most consistent team we have. In the NFL, we, this is the most consistent team. They lost Kyler Murray. They lost DeAndre Hopkins. They lost Chase Edmonds one play in. They lost A.J. Green. You think an offense would just be decimated after that? No, 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 no. The Texas Phenom! James Conner came out of fucking nowhere. Oh, I was the talking about back. Oh, I was talking about a little Colty action. <laughs> he did. Colty, now that's a game manager. He was game manager the shit out Making of that. Making a premium plug and play for backs. Premium that, plug and play good. for backs. No, that's McCoy. good. He didn't hurt them. Credit to the uh, King to Cliff. He fucking put a game plan in there to keep Colt McCoy focused, keep James Conner moving. Even yep. after, after what's his name, um, after Chase Edmonds left, James Conner came out of the grave. He, w- he was buried. All he, we were saying, he's a touchdown to put it go. He's this, he's this. I wanted him to have success. I always did because the man did all he could for Pittsburgh. Unfortunately, last year just didn't happen. And now he's RB1. He is an RB1 to start every week uh, in your fantasy. Congratulations to everybody who, who put him into their flex. Every time, was, and I kept saying, the touchdowns will regress. The touchdowns will regress. Egg on my face. Now the man's the number one running back in Arizona for four weeks because Chase Edmonds sucks and he's – Sorry, he's hurt. I won't say he sucks. He's hurt. He's hurt. But get healthy, Chase, and continue to suck once you get back. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Kyler and DeAndre Hopkins are coming back. His offense is looking good. The defense is looking great. I mean, mm-hmm. I don't know if you could pick anybody. I mean, now you can pick the Rams because of all their additions. But it's the Rams and the Cardinals, in my my opinion, fighting for the top. So there you go. 
It's, it's their NFC to lose. It's their Super Bowl to lose. I agree. Um, I, I again, shout out to, I think you nailed it, Cliff Klingsbury for going ahead and putting together a beautiful game hand for, again, arguably one of the, definitely of our generation, the best backup quarterback of all time. I'm just saying, shout out Colt McCoy. Um, James Conner, I'm glad that you did get a little bit of, um, you know, reincarnation. You, you rise from the ashes. You literally are playing the best you can into the Arizona heat and rise like a phoenix from the ashes. <laughs> and um, again, yeah, and awful. that deep, it was, it was a rough one to get through myself. Oh my <laughs> the God. Cardinals defense continuing to do what they've done all season. Um, they just look very, very impressive. I, I also think, you know, the, the 49ers are trying to still grasp onto what they did. Shout out George Kittle actually kind of had a welcome me back game. I'm fantasy relevant again. I was very happy to see that. Um, but yeah, Cardinals, Cardinal, it is like you said, it is Cardinals league to lose or it is the Rams league to lose at this point. That is likely our NFC championship game. Um, shout out to them. My my game of the week, though, Nude, I'm going to dive right in. You already briefly mentioned this game. It is, of course, uh, so we're double covering the Ravens. Um, so I won't get too much into this because we kind of already talked about it. Um, it was an exciting game, Vikings and Ravens. It was a very classic. Listen, don't get me wrong. Kirk Cousin games are awesome to watch. They are great to watch, not when you're necessarily a fan of the team and he literally rips your heart out every single second, or sometimes that's that cute little thing he likes to do where he thinks the other colored team is his team as well, and he can throw to them and give away a game when he was driving, you know, down four. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, this is what Kirk does. Kirky is who Kirky is, and he's going to give you a great entertaining game to watch. He's an entertainer through and through. I'm surprised him and Mike Zimmerman literally have not, attempted to murder each other or slit each other's throats yet or um at least gave each other a good J to the face and then just fought it out uh because they clearly despise each other <laughs> with every threat of their body um but it was a good it was a genuine good game lamar does what he does he does a comeback king i think at one point the uh ravens were down and that's what they've been doing all season besides last night and what we all thought they were going to do last night i think at one point they were down what was it New like 30 30 16 33 16 something weird like that and then, of Ooh. course, uh, the Ravens were to the Vikings. It was like 30, yeah, it was 30, something 16, like something that. along those it lines. Was, it was another 14 point deficit that they came back boring and yeah. sucked my and, dick. And won the game. I think the final score was uh, 30, 31, 30 there. So, or 34, 31, excuse me. Um, so, yeah, again, Kirky not being able to close the door, Kirky not being able to close a game, um, Lamar taking advantage of those types of situations as he always does. For me, it was just the most We're not gonna see game of the like week that, we won't that made the most like sense in terms of what we've seen so far. Sorry? You won't see you like that from Kurt for a while because I don't think they'll ever close a game in a while, in like a long, long time. So, Would you, How I mean, how much money would you pay to see a Zimmerman and a Kirk Cousins, at, let's say like a rough and rowdy or even, you know, Please somehow a UFC to 260 or whatever the hell they're at. A hundred percent as like threshold 200 because I'm like, dude, I would bare minimum. You're paying that. 200 for that ticket. Yeah. I'm like, dude, that is fun. <laughs> that's going to be funny as fuck. Kirk Cousins can hit a fucking, I think he's just so crazy. You got Zimmerman. He just hey, you got to take Zim. Oh, Zimmerman. Zimmerman will, f dude, this is a guy who has a 20. He's like a hundred years old and has a 20 year old girlfriend. Like this guy is a fucking G. Like this guy's a fucking G. He coached Deion Sanders. Deion Sanders now loved Dave him. Oh my god! No, he's he's a, he's a G. Dave is a G, but this is the original gangster. Like he is a fucking G. So <laughs> he was. Mike, actually, I hope he, you get a different quarterback. When the time was coming, I thought Mike Zimmer was going to be the Steelers coach. I didn't really know who Mike Tomlin was at the time. I knew he was like the defensive back in 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 uh, Minnesota, and then. Um, then we got Mike Tomlin. I was like, oh, wow. I wonder if Mike Tomlin's going to be good. And then Mike Zimmer went to the Vikings. He did all right. Good. We won that. But anyways, uh, Mike <laughs> Zimmer is still a G. Uh, game of the week. <laughs> game of the week. Why is this the game of the week? Well, let me tell you something. You have Aaron Rodgers. You have Adams. You have all these people. Yeah, what? you were like, listen, man, let's draft a quarterback. Because fuck Aaron Rodgers. You so had Jordan Love. Baby, Baby don't Rogers. hurt me. Don't Aaron hurt Rogers. me. Aaron Jordan. Rodgers is on uh, Dr. Joe Rogan's uh, plan of to take care of COVID. He's like putting uh, arms Board together. Board certified Dr. Joe Rogan. Essential, essential oils all over his body, blah, blah, blah. Let's stop it, blah, blah, blah. It's not Aaron Rodgers. 
We're talking like, about he did Jordan his own Love. research. He consulted the right doctors. Oh, Listen, he did all his thing. Him and him and Shaylin had a, a science, and and we're good to go, baby. He's, he's good to go, dude. He's he didn't lie. He's never lied. Put Aaron Rodgers back on the field. He's fine. Oh, Aaron Rodgers, <laughs> what a guy. This is the game, probably the game we thought was going to be the game of the year. Uh, when the schedule Did he go comes with out, Matt this week I didn't even look. No, I didn't. But the week before, Jesus Christ! I mean, you know about that. That's where we all. Uh, well, yeah, we. Game. I called you and talked about oh, that. Yeah, we had God. a long conversation about that. <laughs> Everybody thought this was going to be the game of the year. Super Bowl, probably preview. Chiefs versus Packers. Chiefs has been kind of on the schneid. They're back now to a position where they're winning games, not covering spreads, whatever you want to say. <laughs> Packers, you get to see what happens now. You get to see what happens. Without Mr. Aaron Rodgers on your team, because that's most likely going to happen next year. Jordan Love, the Messiah, he's here. Guess what the Messiah did? Nothing. He had <laughs> one touchdown because Alan Lazard did such cra- a crazy ass move where the defender went, he went under the defender and scored a touchdown. Aaron Jones, everybody knew to shut him down, didn't do shit. Devontae Adams had 14 targets, 14 targets for five, five receptions for 50 yards. Just because you throw it at a guy doesn't mean the guy's supposed to catch it out of nowhere. You can't catch a ball that's out of bounds, fucking Jordan Love. So congratulations, Packers. Congratulations, Packers. And by the way, they're facing arguably the worst defense in the whole entire league. They have the worst safety next to Tyron Matthews. All you have to do How is— How dare you talk road. that way about Sario? How dare you? <laughs> Are you kidding me? I was about to say, Sorgen is probably the worst safety what, yeah. I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, and they're basically healthy. Nobody was missing. Devontae was back. Al Lazard was back. Everybody's back except the two guys, Scantley and fucking uh, Tunyon, which you don't really use anyways. And, and, of course, number 12. Unbelievable that this is what you guys wanted. Congratulations. This is what you wanted. This is what you're going to get. So, and guess what you could have done to fix it? Get Odell Beckham. You didn't do that. So, guess what? Aaron Rodgers, guess where he's going to probably go? Denver, Pittsburgh, Browns. I don't know. He's definitely not a Packer because you're a fucking moron, Packer fans and Packer fucking GM. I'm sorry. Maybe I should. Oh, wow. Pack, you're throwing Packer fans under the bus. No, no. Packers. I'm taking that back because that was me. <laughs> and I, Packers front office. Congratulations. If I'm a Packers fan, if I'm Packers fan, if I'm a Packers fan, I'm donating 10% of my paycheck for the rest of the year to try to make sure they have enough money to get Aaron Rodgers. But I digress. Can I can I just say what pick one one I have one little bone to pick with your game of the week this week. All right, go for it. Why was this the game of the week for you? I mean, it's, it's so funny to me that What is your criteria won- for game of the week? No, my criteria for the game of the week is because I watched it. Oh, so my is the, the most the entertaining week. game of the week, period. That is my criteria. But don't forget that you picked first, so you know I had to like I had to figure it so out. That was your that. second option? Dude, it was the Chiefs and the Packers. I mean, everybody thought, even with Jordan Love, that points were going to score. And I was like, no, it isn't. And then it's like... that an exciting game? It was an exciting game. I enjoyed it. They still had a chance. Even with Jordan Love sucking, they still had a chance. And the, the, let's Falcon say, the Chiefs... Falcon Saints was one. That was an exciting game. Nah, Chiefs, I mean, like, it's Patrick Mahomes. You get to see what Jordan Love is. Like, it was good. Like, I mean, the Chiefs kind of have an offense again. We'll see. But like that, all together, that or the Jaguars together, and Bills was the worst games of the week. No, but that you can team, say worst games, but watching this made me laugh because it's like you really don't like front the front office doesn't want Aaron Rodgers back. That's why it's the game of the week. And then the P- Chiefs couldn't st- like the Chiefs should have killed them. They didn't. So it was the game of the week of stupid people just not doing stupid doing stupid shit, and it just all comes together. Stupid game of the week. You know what? Forget you know what? Game. I was going to plan on continuing to go on on you, but you know what? You just won me over right there. I'm, I'm on Stupid your side. People. Because it was its own of way of entertaining, and you have now met yes. my criteria. Yes. It's entertaining because how the fuck did this happen? How the fuck did we get here? And I, that's why I'm saying, how did we get from the game of the year, possibly, to legit the one of the worst? Like Also, it also the face of the franchise listeners, nudity. Let's really recognize this historic moment in face of the franchise for most likely the first, maybe the second time you've got me to not only relent, but to back down and agree with your opinion. So I just wanted to, good job. Congratulations. On your You're clearly need to get to the real from the show and, get, and want the best for this show. So I'm proud of you. Yeah, we need to get to the real shit. So let's ahead, get to the real shit. Let's win some people, some fantasy games. We're getting down to the wire. We're getting down to playoff content. So. And sh- 
is on the line now. So let's talk real talk right now. And this is week 10. You have probably five more games to try to make the playoffs. Those teams that have three yeah. wins, four wins, this is your playoff push. You need to make some trades. You need to make some moves. Start looking at what you can make up with bye weeks and defenses. I actually looked ahead and I picked up the Phillies, Philadelphia. I'll get to them. But I picked up a defense that doesn't have the best matchup now, but later on does. Like really good matchups. So let's get okay. into it. A um, couple of injuries to look out for. I wonder who that will be. <laughs> Antonio Brown is out. Gronkowski is out. Damian Harris and Ramon De Stevenson both might be out. Alvin Kamara missed practice three times now. It's going to report today that he's going to miss the third practice today. So watch yep. out. And then also uh, bye weeks. We have the – we did just talk about the – maybe. Did we talk about bye weeks? No, we have not covered our bye weeks yet. I'm pulling it up right now unless you got So it. Joey's going to have the bye weeks. Uh, but let's just start off. Uh, quarterback. So we got Bears, Bengals, Giants, Texans. So there you go. You're missing Joe Burrow. You're missing Chase. You're missing Montgomery. You're missing all these things. So let's get to uh, David. Mon- yeah, Montgomery, Cleo Herbert, possibly, even though that's been a little back and forth. Justin Fields, yeah, you're missing all those guys. Yeah. Saquon. So quarter- a quarterback that I like and people are going to be like, really? Uh, Tyler Heineke. Tyler Heineke is going against. I'm sorry, what's his name? Tyler Heineke. I'm sorry, what's his name? Heineke. You want me to say We've gone over this all fucking year. It is not Tyler. Taylor. Sorry. Fucking Taylor Heineke. Taylor is his name. What is his name? <laughs> Tyler. Say it. So Tyler Heineke. Tyler Mother Heineke. Motherfucker. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. You all right. Son now, of a okay. Bitch. I'll say it. So it's Taylor. Taylor Heineke, Heineke is my quarterback. Is my quarterback because everybody's like, oh, the Buccaneers, the Buccaneers, Buccaneers. The Buccaneers are missing a lot of corners, and they just put another corner on IR. They're going to be down. They're going to have to pass. So the guy's going to actually throw for a couple of yards and some touchdowns. Who knows? I don't think he's got a set of balls. Yeah, he's going to throw the ball. They're going to stop the run. They're going to try that. So put him in. Running back. That's you when half the fucking experts are still referring to him as Tyler. So not just you, by the way. Half the fucking all of Barstool does. All of Barstool does. So I know that's where you get it from. And then half of the people on no, ESPN. No, I just, I really, I think literally all of Barstool thinks reason. his name is. Tyler. I don't know why I say Tyler. It's really not because of Barstool. I, I think it's my brain. Like my brain's fucked. So my literally running yeah, back. I can agree with that. Brain, running back. I'm picking Brandon Bolden. I just said Damian Harris and Ramon J. Stevenson both might be out. He yep. is still out there. Trust me. He is still out there. I just picked him up in a lot of leagues because people didn't understand that concussion protocol does take a long time. Wide receiver, I just talked about Antonio Brown being out, Gronkowski being out. Mm-hmm. Now Chris Godwin is a game-time decision. So pick Tyler Johnson. Tyler Johnson is going against one of the worst pass defenses in the NFL. Sorry, Joe. Um, they're going to key in on Mike Evans, so somebody else is going to have to catch the ball. I like Tyler Johnson, tight end. I will not say Robert Sweeney for the third time. I will say Dan Arnold. The guy's Bolden, hitting good. eleven and a half percent owned in ESPN leagues right now. Just picked them up in our league. Picked them up in a and oh, multitude of the leagues. Sorry, I have all three running backs for the Patriots. You're um, looking good in that league, dude. It's you, Jake, and uh, Nudie right now. Are you Jake and uh, Jeff? Better. Three's the best. Yeah, I mean, right. Yeah, six and three. Uh, Jake I know. Uh Jeff, you said silent in the corner, six and three. So you're you're number one in your division, and you're you're currently conquering the uh, Forgotten Goonies League. Good for you. Hey man, thank you. And for tight end, I'm picking Dan Arnold. Dan Arnold, a guy who again awards, loves second week in a row. Oh, did I pick him last week? Yeah, you did. Oh well, pick him up because he's still out there. So I picked so, him up for when I got to uh, repeat Travis, this week too. I got to repeat this week too. Tra- Travis Kelsey's bye week's coming up. Uh, I think George Kittle's is coming up. Uh, so get Dan Arnold when you can, and now a defense. Now defenses for this period of time, if you have a good record, you could pick up a, guy, a defense that's going against a kind of a middle of the pack, uh, kind of like. For me, it's Denver. So Philadelphia is playing Denver, and then they play all these other teams that suck. That suck. They still have to play New York yep. twice. They still have to play, sorry, you guys <laughs> twice. They still have to play, like, the Houston Texans. So, I mean, Philly gets a good matchup here against Denver. I don't don't think they're going to do well, like, six to eight points. But after mm-hmm. that, you have good matchups that you can play. So those are my pickups this week. 
Yeah, um, I, I like those a lot. I got as always. I have percentages for you. You're welcome, people. I do that for you, and you can't be bothered with it. You know, question them as you will. I don't want to by any means I throw my partner under the bus. I but don't give a fuck. Question if you choose. Um, I'm going ahead and going Mike White again, man. I, I, everyone goes, well, he didn't do well against the week against the Colts. Yeah, because he was out that he first quarter. Hurt. And, and he, <laughs> he got, got hurt. hurt. He hurt his hand. And by the time he was, you know, for the first quarter, he did play and he had a touchdown, 96 yards for seven to nine passing. Uh, the week prior, we all know what he did 405 yards, four touchdowns. I, Love Mike White. I think he is legit. I think he is one of those overlooked quarterbacks that's going to make a name for himself in the league. I think the Jets finally have somebody they can go ahead and call a franchise quarterback. And if not, we all know they have another franchise quarterback in Zach Wilson whenever he gets healthy. Shout out Zach. Um, but uh, he's only 7%, 7 percent, seven. Point six percent owned. The Jets are catching fire. At least that offense is starting to show some spark. Jameson Crowder still doing his thing. Elijah Moore starting to break out. Go get yourself some Mike White. I think it's a good option coming up. Um, Devontae Freeman. Noon mentioned earlier in the show. He is looking like De- uh, Devontae Freeman of old. He only proved that more la- uh, uh, last night. Uh, no touchdowns, but I still think this is a guy that's clearly the lead back in uh, a running first team and the Baltimore Guy, especially when we're very, you're very thin out there, especially in the waiver wire. It's a guy that will at least be get you 12 points to kind of keep you whole. Um, next up at wide receiver, yes, okay, yes, it's easy. It's obviously the pick of the week. This is my first time all year doing an obvious easy pick of the week, but I, I think this guy is clearly a candidate to. It, it, not quite a dark horse rookie candidate of the year yet, but definitely somebody that we're going to be talking about years to come, and that is Elijah Moore. Um, I think me and you were both high on him going into the season. We were just Very worried high. about – I'm still high. Still extremely high, just worried about kind of the team that he was on. Clearly that doesn't matter. Clearly, like I just said, they got a quarterback that can throw a lot of jets are still out there on the waiver wire. Elijah Moore is one that everyone's been talking about this week, but he's an obvious take. Six point seven percent own, which I find incredible. So go and get him while you can. Clearly, the hottest waiver to wire target hasn't been picked up by everybody yet. So go get him while you can. Um, Adam Trotman, another name that we did throw out there at the beginning of the season as well. Another hot name that I think, uh, if you did fantasy football or you're into fantasy football, at, like at any capacity, um, you heard about Troutman, or if you're in three leagues or more and just obsessed with fantasy football, you heard about Troutman. I think this is a guy that we're going to start seeing utilized here the second half of the season. The uh, snaps on the field have started to uptick their nude. The targets have started to uptick their nude. I know you are you can't really feel secure about the guy throwing the ball, but I, this is a clearly desperation play. I think if you're in deeper leagues and, uh, and are a touchdown dependent needed, Troutman is definitely a guy where it's thin, a tight end that can help you out. And we've already mentioned it. Uh, throughout the whole show and of course the defensive mind that is Mike Rabel and what he continues to do with his defenses year in and year out. Um, and now that he actually has some pieces that he needs filled, they they've done fantastic. Um, only 26.7% owned and they are currently the eighth break defense, but the last three weeks they are easily the number one and, and where they have 14 points against Kansas city, 12 points against the Colts and 16 points against the Los Angeles Rams. This defense is fucking on fire and working together. Like it is beautiful clockwork and a fact, Factory that is working to be a top five Fortune 500 company. I love the Titans this week as they're facing the Blagin and Blundered Saints. There you go. All right, baby. Let's go to our gambling corner real quick. We'll just do over unders and um, the picks, and then move on because uh, we're running a little too far. Sorry, my rants got a little heated today, so my bad. Hey, it was a great rant and rambling segment. It was definitely worth uh, that that length of time here, buddy. So I will do my best to speed through as I always do through these picks. Let us begin with Week 10's Gambling Corner. First up, uh, we have the Jacksonville Jaguars going to see the Indianapolis Colts. The Jags are plus 10 and feeling themselves and feeling. Ah, happy to be like you love. You kind of broke up. Who was Jags playing? Sorry, you broke up at that. Jags are playing the Indianapolis Colts. The Colts are at home. It, the Colts are minus 10 favored here. Over-under is 47 and a half. So give me the Colts and then give me the under. You're going to go ahead and take the Colts and under. I mean, I, I'm going to go ahead and it's, it's now a trendy hot pick apparently to pick the Jags. But I'm not going to pick them to win. But I'm going to go ahead plus 10 and I'm going to go over in this game. I'm going to go plus 10 and over. I think... Uh, 
the, it explodes a little bit more after the Jacks game last week. And Colts always get you at least 30 points. That Next up, we have the Cleveland Browns versus the New England Patriots. Uh, the Patriots are getting two and a half here. They are favored at home. Over under is 45 and a half. Nude, who you like, who you love. Give me the over. And then surprisingly, I'm going to pick, uh, I think the Browns figured it out. I think without Odell, Browns are, are better than the Patriots. So I think uh, – Miles Garrett's going to go after that rookie quarterback. And then with the running back problems, they're going to have to throw the ball more. So give me the Browns. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. And you said over under, you said under here. Uh, I said, what did I say? Over. I think you said, I under. said over. You I said, said over. Okay. Yeah. So, and then you're going over here. I, I'm going to go ahead. And I think this is a game where the Patriots control it actually majority of the time and it's in more of an under game but i'm gonna go ahead and we'll be on the same page with you with the browns i'm gonna go browns money line here not my dog i'm gonna go browns money line here uh next up we have the atlanta falcons going to see the dallas cowboys in jerry world jerry world and the cowboys are getting minus eight and a half over under is 54 and a half as always, I'll go ahead and go here first. And my dog of the week came through last week when I picked the Broncos for y'all. It's going to come through again. We're going to go ahead and have the Falcons. Don't forget they pulled this game off last year as well in week four. It was a really thrilling game. I think they're going to do it again. Falcons plus 315 here for me, and it's going to definitely hit the over. So I'll pick the Falcons with the spread because I don't see them winning, but I see them uh, definitely losing in Falcons fashion. But the over is going to hit because I just I think this these both these offenses are just going to try and kill you through the air. So, and both the defenses are terrible. Yeah, I, so almost a Newton Joe on the same page, but not quite. So we can't call it. Next up, Buffalo Bills and what many are going to call the barn burner, the dumpster fire game of the week. That's right, Buffalo Bills versus the New York Jets. Jets are plus eleven and a half at home. Over under is forty seven and a half. Newt, who you like, who you love. I'm going to pick the under, but I can see how this goes over. And I'm going to pick, if Mike White's the starting quarterback, to cover. I'm picking the Jets to cover. Nude and Joe on the same page, but I don't feel That's great about up. it. But I've been a Mike White guy. so I, it. it sucks, but I don't feel great about it either. So. Definitely the cringeworthy Nude and Joe on the same page pick of the week. Take it what you will. Next up, we have the New Orleans Saints going to see the Tennessee Titans at home. They are minus three. The Titans are over under is 44. Nude, who you like, who you love here? No Camara. So Camara might not be there. I'm going to say under. So we're missing two of the best running backs. And so under, and then I'm going to pick the better quarterback. I'm picking Titans to cover with Ryan Tannehill, whatever you say about the plug and play bullshit. <laughs> Listen, I, I think this is a week where we the Titans are that team where they have a couple hot weeks and then they have the what the hell game. Um, I think this will be this week for the Titans. I think this will be their what the hell happened here game. It's going to be the Saints shocking everybody. And another dog, I will add this to my second dog, make this a dog parlay, dog eight with the Falcons. I go ahead and I'm going to go Saints here and I'm going to go under. And what is a surprisingly pretty snooze fest of a game to the very end? Next up, all right. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers are going to see the Washington football team name to be determined later uh, date, but probably not. Plus nine, the Washington football team name to be determined later date, but probably not are at their home field. Just take FedEx. my route. Take my route. It might help you. Take my route. Just take my route. Just don't pick it. I'll pick it. We'll pick the Bucks and the over, and then we move on. I'm hesitant, but you know what? It's work for you. I normally don't like to have your back like, in this capacity when it comes to my team like this, but I, I'll take a page from your book. Four, for straight is, four straight is four straight. They don't ask how you got there. They ask how much. And how how hard, how hard far has stubborn Joe taken me? Not so far. I'm not taking this game. Who you got? Who, who you like? Who you love? All right, Bucks in the over. So next. Beautiful. Fuck me. Next up is the Lions versus the Pittsburgh Steelers. No, I have Lions. How, how did you Lions. do this back to back? How did you do this back to back? I'm out. Just pick. Just don't ask. Just pick. I have the Lions. They are part of my dog parlay. So again, if you were paying attention here, where dog parlays worked out last week for you, it's going to be Lions, Saints, Falcons, and my dog parlay. This is as under as under comes at 42 and a half. 
Next up, Minnesota Vikings and the San Diego Chargers, who are for oh. some reason playing in Los Angeles. For some reason, the Chargers are playing in Los Angeles. They call that home. The Chargers are minus three. The over-under is 53. Nude, who you like, who you love? Vikings habitually, because they keep it so close that they're going to lose by a field goal. And then I will yeah. pick the over, because both defenses are not good. And somehow Kirk Cousins is playing good. It's just they can't close. So. We haven't really talked much about this, but I think there is a, a dose of concern, a sprinkle of concern that should be on the, the Chargers right now, and that's exactly why I'm going to go ahead and pick them. That's why I'm going to go ahead and pick them at minus three. I think they, they go back to what they've been doing those first couple of weeks that we saw. I think the last couple of weeks aren't the Chargers that we know, and I think we figure out one of the puzzle pieces in this league, and that is the Chargers minus three, and I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to take the over as well. Next up, we have the Carolina Panthers going to see the Arizona Cardinals. Cardinals are minus 10 and a half. We do have the return of sweet, sweet Kyler. And, of course, the over-under is 44. Nude, who you like? Who Not you, uh, yet. Don't, hey, don't give false facts. We don't know if uh, DeAndre Hopkins, Rondell Moore, and Kyler Murray are not playing. So, with that being said, Fair. Cam, New Cam Newton's it's playing. And with that being said, Cardinals, no matter what, minus 10, taking it, and then the over. Newton and Joe on the same page. Second Newton and Joe on the same page of the day. Next up, we do have, the re there is somebody that is returning, and his his name is indeed Russell Wilson, or Mr. Dangerous, is coming back to the Seattle Seahawks. I see the Green Bay Packers, who I believe will still be love controlled. That's right. This will still be what is love. Yes? Okay, I guess okay. I'll pick Russell Wilson. I guess I'll pick Russell Wilson in the over. I hate picking him. He sucks. He's just a, he's a nerd. He doesn't suck. He's just a nerd. He's a nerd. Yeah, return to Russell. Yeah, yeah I got to go ahead and go with you here, dude. We're going to give you a third, dude and Joe on the same page. Are you going money line, though? I'm going to go plus three and a half. No, I'm going plus three. If Aaron Rodgers is playing, it's plus three. If he's not, then yeah, money line. All right, we got our three final games here. New next up, the Philadelphia Eagles going to see the Denver Broncos. Broncos, after absolutely fucking rotting the Dallas Cowboys, are minus two and a half here at home. The over under is forty five. Nude, who you like, who you love? Under, because both these teams are wild. And then I actually will pick the Eagles. I think the Eagles will cover, meaning they probably will win by one point, and that's how we're gonna leave it. Of course, never never biased at all from Joe here when it comes to NFC East teams, but I am going to go ahead and pick the Denver Broncos, minus two and a half, as it's going to be another route by the Broncos. And I'm going to go ahead, and I think the Broncos here, I think they get, uh, you call me crazy, call me hot take of the week. This is definitely Joe's hot take of the week, but I think they get the fucking over on their own over. Wow. <laughs> Next up, the Chiefs praying for revenge, somehow looking out. And seeing, you know, the $500 million is worth it. It's worth it all. We have over 52. Nude's already given me the sign that we're, we're taking it over here. I'm right there with him. It's an over game, uh, over game, over game. And, and I will pick the Raiders to cover because it's in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. They're doing this bullshit where they're rallying behind their team. Somehow, some way, they lost to the Giants. I understand that. But when they play the Chiefs, they find another gear. So I picked the I picked the Raiders to cover. I think that the Chiefs finally, and this is the chalkiest of the chalk. It's the everybody's least favorite pick right now in football. But yep, Chiefs are covering this game. I think they finally, finally figured out they have to at some point. We I I don't care. I just can't believe they don't. I can't believe they won't. They're gonna figure it out. It, it's just not possible. Chiefs minus two and a half over here, and the final game. In a division, another division rivalry here, we have the Los Angeles Rams going to see the San Francisco 49ers. The 49ers are at home and are getting plus three and a half. Over under is 49. Nude, who you like, who you love? Give me the Rams and the over, my boy. I will also, actually, almost fourth Newton Joe on the same page, but I'm taking the Rams and I will take the under. I don't think the 49ers put up anything. Oh, okay. Oh, there you go. So there yes, you sir. go. Those are, the, those are their games. So everybody, thank you for rocking with us. This is the face of the franchise. We do want to say thank you to Four Corner Studio for hosting us. Follow, like, and subscribe. 
all Face of the Franchise stuff, as well as all the other podcasts under the umbrella of Four Corners Studio. Follow them on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter for all the new releases, as well as YouTube. And for our sponsors, Joe has put on the Stuck Up Clothing uh, sweater or sweatshirt. Uh, finest fashion money could buy. Follow them on IG sure. for all their new releases, as well as putting orders in, um, as well as I site eyewear company. Mobile eyewear company comes to you for all your eyewear needs. Follow them on IG as well. Their new lines are always out there. I site with an I, as well as Seduction by Jax. Uh, she gets booked up fast, guys. We keep telling you. I keep yeah. saying homecoming, and I keep saying prom. Prom is coming up soon. Yeah, people are like, it's November, Michael. What the fuck? No, she gets booked up. If you want to get your hair done right, if you want to get your look right down for that, or weddings or anything, she is the perfect girl. Follow her on IG yeah. as well as we tag all of them on our um, posts. So please follow them, give them a like, and tell them the Four Corners boys, face of the franchise studio boys, are saying uh, go over there. As well as this absolutely brought to you by get yourself Spotify right, my balls. Get your balls ready for anything you like. Uh, use four CR twenty to get money off your next purchase. That's number four CR and the number twenty off your next purchase. I am Michael Shinny the Pharaoh. That is Will Joe. Thank you for rocking with us. Stay breezy, stay easy. One love. Support your local SoundCloud rappers. Motherfucker. <laughs>